Continuing on with our journey of the conduction part of the respiratory system, let's now have a look at the trachea and the bronchi. Now, the trachea is sort of the main air passageway in which we use to breathe. And what's also very important of the trachea is that it contains these C-shaped cartilage rings. What's quite unique and quite important there is that they are C-shaped cartilage, not completely round. And the, the purpose for that is due to the positioning of the trachea, because directly behind the trachea is the esophagus. Now, what's also important with the esophagus when we need to eat is that the esophagus needs to distend, it needs to stretch out. So what can happen is that if the trachea was made out of just perfectly round cartilage rings, then it would impact the esophagus being able to function efficiently. So these C-shaped cartilage allows that structured rigidity of the trachea so that it stays open, but it also has that part of flexibility there for the esophagus to be able to stretch out. Now, as we move further down from the trachea, what's going to happen is that the trachea is going to split off into our bronchi. Now, the primary bronchi, which is our primary division part, is where we see the branching of our airway into our right and our left lung. Now, what is important to keep in mind here is that the right main bronchus is bigger than the left bronchus. And the reason for that is that the right lung is bigger than the left lung due to that cardiac notch. So as we move further down, we move from our primary bronchioles branching down into our secondary bronchioles. And these are what provide air to each individual lobe of the lungs. And what we see here in the same way that we looked at our blood vessels and that they eventually get smaller and smaller and smaller, we see the same thing with our bronchi until we get down to our bronchioles, until we reach the terminal bronchiole down here. Now the terminal bronchiole is an important section because the terminal bronchiole signifies the end of the conduction zone and the beginning of the respiratory zone. And that is when the air is then going to move down that respiratory bronchiole and enter our alveoli, which I'll be talking about in the next video. Now what is also important to note with our trachea and our bronchioles is that they are made up of these pseudostratified columnar epithelial cells that also contain a heap of goblet cells. And this gives rise to the mucociliary escalator. So if we break down this term, muco meaning mucus, ciliary meaning cilia, and escalator, to escalate, to move up. And what this does is that it moves mucus from the lungs up and deposit it into our stomach. Now, for the most part, this system goes mostly unnoticed by all of us. The only times we're really aware of the mucociliary escalator is when we are sick, when we are very sick with a chest infection and your lungs will be producing a lot more mucus, which is very uh, rich with uh, white blood cells to help our immune system out. Another thing with the mucociliary escalator is smoking. So we are all, I'm, I'm sure, aware of the iconic smoker's cough, that real wretched cough that is seen with people who have been smoking for an extended period of time. This is because nicotine and other compounds within cigarettes actually inhibit this mucociliary escalator. They semi-paralyze those cilia and prevent adequate movement of mucus up and out of the lungs. This is why a common excuse by people who try to quit smoking, they say, oh, every time I quit smoking, I get sick, I get a chest infection. That's actually not true. For the most part, what is actually happening is that because they have stopped smoking, this mucociliary escalator is actually starting to work again. And they are able to move all of that mucus that has been sitting in their lungs up and out. Another change that occurs as we move from our bronchi all the way down into our bronchioles is there's a distinct change in terms of the overall structure. Now, what I mean by that is that the cartilage rings that we discussed earlier with the trachea, these start to turn into more like cartilage plates. And then as we move further and further down, we see fewer and fewer cartilage, primarily because we don't really need these very rigid air pipes in our lungs at that level. We need it to be more flexible and be able to move. Another thing that we notice is an increase in the amount of smooth muscle. 
Now the smooth muscle and looking at pipes or, or vessels, what we saw previously was say vasoconstriction or vasodilation. So this is the opening or closing of blood vessels. The smooth muscle that we see in our bronchioles serves the same purpose, except instead of constricting and dilating the blood vessels, it constricts and dilates the airways and can control how much air is moving in and out at any one time. Now again, this is generally a process that is unnoticed by many people. However, when we see uh, allergens or breathing difficulties, like for example, asthma, this is when we have unregulated smooth muscle constriction or bronchoconstriction, which can impact on people breathing.